Oh, Jimmy, come yes, over. Jimmy. I know, I want to shave under my arm. The first episode of It's Me or the Dog was filmed over a decade ago in 2005. In this video series, I'll take you back through those early episodes, giving some behind the scenes trivia on the show and answering some of your frequently asked questions. But most importantly, I'll be updating you on how thinking in the dog training community has evolved and how some of the methods, techniques and ideas used in the show have changed. What will Victoria make of the two Labradors that are making life hell for Dave and Angela, Katie and Chris? They definitely rule yeah, their own. So, yeah. No! <laughs> they got three-year-old Duke as a naughty puppy. But when one-year-old Jimmy arrived from a rescue shelter, the excitable dogs took control. Jimmy was supposed to be a surprise for my 40th birthday. It was the worst surprise I've ever had, actually. I love Labradors. My first dog was a Labrador. She was a rescue and he had her for 11 years. But Labradors are highly energetic and if you don't channel that energy in the right way, well, they're just gonna be dog. It's just that they're big and that's a lot of dog and a lot of things can go wrong. He gets really excited and he starts peeing on the floor. Oh, oh He has actually oh. rolled onto his back with his belly in the air and he's actually peed in somebody's eye. Jimmy, go in there now! Since Jimmy arrived, it's been like hell. Thank you. Jimmy no, thank is literally you. destroying their home. He's actually chewed and eaten the coals off the fire. Remote controls for TVs. Footwear, boots, shoes. That's rude! Trained, Labradors can guide the blind safely across the road. Untrained, these two are an accident waiting to happen. Taking the dogs for a walk is worse than a nightmare. Both very, very strong dogs are in excess of seven stones each and they're very, very difficult to pull back. Really dangerous near the road. I'm really frightened that one of them's going to get seriously hurt. Are you all right, Angela? No, but, but I've got a bad back anyway. But that is just um, without any distractions. So you can imagine if you see another. Ah. The jealous dogs are literally coming between man and wife. Oh, Duke will start trying to kiss me, so Dave can't. My boyfriend! There's nowhere to hide from the over-amorous hounds. Oh, Jimmy, get yes, over. Jimmy. I know, I want to shave under my arm. And it's not just their owners they love too much. Dog love has taken over the home. Oh. Oh. And after a hard day's humping, they climb into bed with their owners. They lay on my legs and my legs get stiff and then I get up and I have to walk about. Jimmy, he snores so loud that the first time he did it, I, I seriously thought there was something wrong in the street. <coughs> he was coming from the bottom of our bed. Lots of dogs snore. And snoring in itself is not a problem unless it keeps you awake. Social sleeping is actually really important for bonding. If you're fine with just a sliver of space for you in the bed, whilst your lab takes up the rest, then have at it. But if not, then set up a bed outside. Maybe have a baby gate so you don't shut the door completely and shut your dog out, so that your dog can be close to you, but not taking up too much space. Hello, you've got me toe in there. The dogs are dominating Angela and Dave's lives 24 hours a day, and the strain is taking its toll. Did he hit me? Hit me. Joy! It's not fair on the kids, it's not fair on Dave and I and our relationship. They certainly do put pressure on our relationship because if I come home and Angie's had a bad day with the dogs, it can cause friction. Jimmy, no, that's rude. Go away. Go away, Jimmy. My dad and Angie. Um, sometimes argue with what the dogs do, then it puts us all down then. They do drive you up the wall. I can see the, the torment that it's causing Ange. A lot, a lot more than me. Things really cannot continue as they are. Victoria's spent 10 years taming dogs on both sides of the Atlantic. Her training is the family's last hope, but will they be up for it? I started my dog training career in London 
And then I had my two businesses in Manhattan and in New Jersey. I wanted to be able to give information out on a much larger scale to say, hey, if you've got a behavioral problem with your dog, you don't have to relinquish it to the shelter. And here are some things that you can do to be a responsible pet owner. One evening, I remember as a new mom, my daughter was about eight months old, and I sat down and I watched the first episode of The Super Nanny. And I go, oh my gosh, that's it. I do that with dogs. So I ran downstairs, I wrote a treatment, and a treatment is about a, a page's worth of an idea, and sent it to the producers of The Super Nanny. The next day, they called me. We filmed with a family that I was actually working with in New Jersey that was a very it's me or the dog type of family, and they had lots of cats and dogs and children. And we made a, 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 an eight minute video called Super Trainer. And that's how it's me or the dog started. Immediately Victoria arrives, she's confronted with just how sexual these dogs are. Jimmy, give it over. This, this is, is Jimmy. And this is, and this is Joe. It's their way of getting information, I have to right. say. Smelling people's crutches is the way, because everybody, I know it's a bit embarrassing to talk about it, but everybody has a different smell. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's why when they greet visitors, that's why they do it, because right. they get a lot of information just from that. Now the dogs know everything there is to know about Victoria, it's her turn to find out about them. Jimmy jumped up and his claw went through the wow. wall. Nice bit of plastic yes. to get your, your, your mouth around. Mm -hmm. That's a shame, isn't it? Puppies do need to chew when teething, but Jimmy and Duke are big boys now. Oh my gosh, it's gone through a wall. I'm surprised you've got a house left. People often ask me, do I meet the family first before I film with them? And the answer is no, I don't. What you see me going in for the first time is me going in for the first time and meeting them. I do, however, see a video that producers have taken where they go to interview the family. Sometimes I can go into a household and everything that I've seen or maybe the training that I think I might do gets turned upside down. Labradors are great working dogs because of their renowned obedience, but not in this family. Let go. Let go. Angela has no more control over the dogs than Dave. No! 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 Jumping up at their owners is attention-seeking behaviour, just like naughty, demanding children. It's not good that they jump up on you no. demanding demanding their toys. You should be the one that's in control of everything. Jimmy and Duke are boisterous Labradors. They have a whole load of energy and they jump on people a lot. But dogs don't jump up just because they want attention or because they want something. Here you see that Jimmy and Duke are jumping up because Angela's holding the toy up for them. So of course they're gonna jump to try and get the toy. But dogs jump up for other reasons. Obviously dogs are smaller than us and they're always looking up at our face all the time. And one of the best ways to get their face close to our face is to jump up so that they can become more on our level. If the dog is jumping out of anxiety, it's because the dog needs something from you. And the very worst thing that you can do is knee the dog in the chest or tell the dog off or shout or use a shock collar or hurt its neck or do anything like that because that doesn't teach the dog what to do in the situation. Management is your friend. You can put a baby gate up and the dog can get over the initial excitement and then when everything's calmed down, then they can go and say hello to the person. Or you can teach your dog how to greet people. So instead of jumping up, you can teach your dog to go and stand calmly in front of a person. You can teach them to go up to a person and sit or you can teach them to go get a toy and bring the toy to the person to say hello. So there's many things that you can do. I hope that little piece on jumping has helped you understand maybe a little better why Jimmy and Duke are jumping and it's not just because they're like naughty, demanding children. Dave and Angela want to show Victoria how jealous their dogs get when they show each other any affection. Oh, you know. Oh, don't know where that tongue's been. I think we do. Yeah. Licking bottom to licking your face. Even when Angela's having a quiet moment in the bathroom, she's not safe. Jimmy's just licking it off again. Oh. 
these dogs are orally fixated. They chew a lot, mm. they lick a lot. Licking in the bath, licking your legs in the bath is just an extension of that. Angela needs to be stronger. She can't let the dogs into the bathroom. She can't give in to the whining. She needs to be a leader. And when Dave comes home, the greeting he gets is warm, wet and unhygienic. Hello. 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 Oh, no! Oh, it's been all over! Jimmy. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> so he does that every time, doesn't he? Every time, yeah. That's just to get so excited, yeah. he just pees. Yeah. That's a behaviour that's got to stop. It is, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, soon you're not going to have it have any visitors to your home because no. they don't want to have pee all over no. them. No. And I think I've got no. just a little bit of pee on my tights just then. Oh, no! <laughs> all right, joke. Oh. Joke. Come on. Out on the streets, Jimmy and Duke are still very much in charge. Don't pull, Jim. Jimmy. Have you ever taught them to walk on the lead? I have tried. I did try, but I've sort of just given up now. How can you expect dogs to walk well on the lead when they really haven't been taught. It's a very, very real worry. Stop that now! Drop! Now Stop Victoria has Stop. seen how Drop badly it. behaved the dogs are with their owners, she wants to see if she can exert any control over them. Sit. Watch me. Watch me command is used to focus your dog's attention onto you in order to maintain control and establish your role as leader of the pack. Watch me is a great cue to get your dog's attention, but does it really establish your role as pack leader? The whole idea of pack leadership is based on flawed research. Researchers wanted to study wolf behavior. It was very, very hard, and it is very hard still, even with modern technology, to study wolf behavior in the wild. So what they did was take wolves from different packs, put them into a confined area, and watched how they interacted. Are you gonna see a true picture of what a true pack is, which is mum, dad, and offspring? Or are you gonna get a lot of confusion, a lot of challenges, and potentially violence? Well, that's what the researchers saw. As they were watching it, they thought, well, a lot of the stuff that we're seeing between these wolves, we can use with our domestic dogs because Dogs are descended from wolves. These very scientists that did that research have changed their minds, apologized for the findings now that have sort of set people into this whole wrong idea of pack leadership and pack this and pack that, causing such confusion. So put that whole idea of pack leadership behind. You're gonna teach them the skills with which they can be successful. And you're gonna set yourself up as a teacher rather than a pack leader. Good boy. These are boisterous, naughty dogs, but they're very intelligent. And I've shown that because in a minute, I've got them under control. Victoria has no problem keeping these dogs in line, but can she pass on her skills to Dave and Angela? Right, dogs don't speak English, they talk dog. Dogs respond really well to vocal tone and pitch. A lot of people shout at their dogs, stop it or no. OK, I'm going to teach you a better vocal correction. When dogs tell each other off, it's a kind of, ah, I do exactly the same. Ah, just a short, sharp vocal noise that is, is almost like a shock. Well, it's a distraction. It's no physical hitting, there's no shouting, but it's, but ah, it's got to be hard, punchy, short and sharp. Ah, ah, beautiful. Vocal corrections can be used at times, but you have to use them sparingly because if the dogs are used to hearing it, when and if you really have to use it in an emergency, if your dog's heard it all the time, it doesn't mean anything. As I've evolved as a trainer, I spend less time correcting dogs and more time teaching dogs what to do. So in terms with Jimmy and Duke, Instead of doing those vocal corrections all the time, I'm gonna teach them what to do so I can set them up for success so I don't have to expend so much energy saying ah. Ah. Perfect. Ah. 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 Oh, uh, could do a bit better. Ah. Beautiful. I'm also gonna teach you how to give the look, the look, <laughs> the I mean business look. I mean I really mean I know. business look. No, no bull, I mean business look. They know it comes from you, they know that you mean business, 
they know to back off. It's not long before the family have to bring their training into action. Oh, no. oh we got a bit oh, of jumping no. here. Oh. Do you know what? This isn't just a sexual thing. This is also a dominance thing. Is it? Yeah. I oh, mean, it's they're very both embarrassing. Yeah. I want you just to use that training. Ah, ah. More punchy. More punchy. Try it one more time. Ah, ah. Good, good, fantastic. Do you see how that worked? Brilliant. When your dog responds to a correction, tell them good boy. That's it. Oh, lovely. Always give feedback. Jimmy and Duke hump each other a lot. They also hump other people, especially guests that come into the home, especially the kids. You hear me say that humping can be a dominance behavior. That is absolutely true. There's a lot of other reasons why dogs hump, and so I wanted to tell you a few of those now. Like jumping up, humping can be a way of controlling environment. Because you're uncomfortable with the change of environment, you're uncomfortable with people that have come into your home. Humping occurs when dogs are really excited, when they wanna say hello, humping is fun. It can be a real habit. It can be a great communicative tool. Humping is a great way of getting attention. So there's many different reasons why dogs hump, not just because they want to dominate. Angela can use Victoria's training to stop the dogs humping each other, but can she stop them doing it to the family's visitors? So when your friends come, just say, please ignore the dog, and if the dogs jump up, turn your back. Okay, let the dogs out, just say, tell them now. Just ignore dogs. If they jump out, you just turn your back on them. Okay. That's it. Just walk through, lovely. So far, so good. But a few minutes later, Duke can't control himself. Duke! Leave it! Ah, ah! Ah, ah! Duke! That's not... Angela fails. Victoria has to step in. Duke! Leave it! We've seen some sexual behaviour by these dogs. I mean, they're like two young men. They're fueled with testosterone. Basically, they want to get laid. You can see throughout the episode that I use quite a lot of very harsh vocal corrections. In this instance, when Duke was jumping up on the child, I had to get Duke off. In terms of me going to a client's home, it's important for me to see the behaviour, what just normally happens. And so we want to be able to show the viewer the normal behaviour of just what happens every day. But, what could I have done differently as a trainer if I put my trainer hat on? I would not allow the dogs access to the kids when the kids were around. I would have the dogs behind a baby gate in another room, very comfortable with toys, hanging out, so that I wouldn't set my dogs up for failure by having these kids so that they could rehearse the humping behavior. So I can manage the environment, set the dog up for success, and whilst I'm doing that, I can teach the dog what to do so that one day I'll be able to put dog back with kids again. Dog's not gonna hump, kids are gonna be able to run around and have fun, and the situation is gonna be resolved. Dog behavior expert Victoria Stilwell wants to be certain Dave and Angela take her training seriously. She's brought them to a rescue shelter to show them what happens to dogs whose owners don't shape up. Britain's dog obsession has created its own epidemic, with thousands of dogs each week dumped at rescue centres. This shelter doesn't destroy healthy dogs, but local authorities on average put down one dog every hour. I mean, coming here now, I feel really sad, I feel really, really depressed, I feel really upset, I've got a knot in my stomach, I feel like I want to burst out crying. I really, I just feel guilty that we, we were going to take him back. Sorry, Dave. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> if you're going to have a dog in your home, you have to be responsible for that dog. So let's get to work. You want some, Jimmy? I can't give Duke some without you. Here. All dog owners love to indulge their pets, but feeding a dog with scraps from the table sends them the wrong message about their place in your pack. Feeding a dog from the table does not send your dog the wrong message about their place in the pack. Feeding your dog from the table just encourages your dog to beg. That's it, really. There's nothing about, oh, now you're feeding me from the table, I feel like I am going to be as high a rank as you. 
If a dog sees that it's getting food from a particular area, like a tabletop or from a particular person, what are they going to do? They're going to beg. Their behavior of sitting and waiting for food is being reinforced because food has come from the table via the person to their mouth. So they're just going to do it again and again and again. And the more that they're successful, the more they're going to do it. So you can't tell dogs that beg off if you're the one that has reinforced the behavior by feeding your dog from the table. So forget the whole idea that a dog's going to see its different place in the pack. What I do with begging dogs is that, hey, I can use management. I can put them in a different room. I can put them outside or they can just stay behind a line. If you kind of construct an imaginary line and you just teach your dogs to stay behind the line, you can do that too. So there's many different options to teach your dogs not to beg at the table. And the most important thing is never feed them from the table again. I know I'm really dirty and disgusting, but I just tend to share whatever I've got with them. Seriously, mm. Jimmy could have gone back to the rescue shelter. Yes. Jimmy's life could have ended mm. in order for that never ever to happen. You have to carry on the training, the being tougher throughout. And one of those times is at the table too. To stop the dog's incessant begging, Victoria will have to teach them to control their enormous urge to eat. I want you, as you're doing this, to keep giving him the eye. Give him the Victoria eye. Right. Okay? Keep policing the piece of chicken on the side. When he looks away, you tell him good boy. Good boy! I've got a piece of chicken in my hand. I'm going to let Jimmy sniff it and oh. smell it. When he takes his nose away from it, I give it to him. Good boy. As I do it now, I'm going to put a word to it. Leave it. Good boy. Good boy. Leave it. Uh-uh. Good boy. Next up, it's Duke's turn. Good boy. What a good boy. Leave it. Victoria's taught the dogs to keep their distance from their owner's dinner. In fact, she solved all the problem behavior that wasn't down to testosterone. Her baby gate has banished the dogs from the bedroom. Back, 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 back. By communicating with body language, they're off the sofa. Good boy. Jimmy, drop. And because Victoria has introduced rewards, they're giving objects back to their owners for the first time. Next on Victoria's agenda is stopping Jimmy urinating on Dave. As soon as he hears the motorbike, he gets very excited because daddy's coming home. Yeah. And then you're giving him so much attention, you're going, hello, 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 that he can't contain himself, so he just pees. It's called excitable pee, or stop the peeing. Yeah. You now have to change your behavior. Yeah. Instead of fussing him when he greets you, this is going to be hard, but I want you to ignore him. Okay. I want you to ignore him and just to walk in. Say hello, but ignore hello. and walk in. That's it, just walk in. <laughs> now you can give him a little pet. Just don't fuss him, though, just a little quick one. That's it. Lovely. What's for tea? This has been an instant result. So as long as he stands back from him and just praises the calm, it's going to be fine. So we no longer have this and this decorating the entrance to the door. It's the first time Jimmy's managed to contain himself. The reason why Jimmy urinated when people came through the front door was, I think, a mixture of excitement and a tiny little bit of anxiety. But Danny S has asked a question. She has a Labrador, gets very excited, and when the lab gets excited, she can't train it. Dogs are learning 24-7, just as people are learning 24-7. Can you make it like this isn't a session, this is sort of an everyday part of life? Because sometimes when you do a dedicated training session, that's the time you bring out the treats. That's the time you bring out the toys. And then dogs get so excited, they, they, they can't even think. So maybe you can use a lower value toy, a lower value treat, or maybe don't even use these reinforcers at all. 
use something like a life reward. And you'll find that dogs are very smart, they're gonna work it out really quickly. If I kind of calm down a bit and just stand calmly or sit calmly, my leash goes on, we go for a walk, or the door opens and I go outside to play in the garden. I think the excitement will lessen if your reinforcers are not as exciting. But despite all Victoria's good work, the dogs are still humping non-stop. Angela hates letting the dogs off the lead because she can never persuade them to come back to her. Now, there we go. If you run after him, he thinks you're chasing him. Yes. But if you run away from him and you make a noise like, ah! oh, something like a really big distracting noise, he's more likely to come. <laughs> Recall has worked perfectly with Jimmy, but Duke has smelt a bitch, and even Victoria can't get him back. This is out of control, so... Oh, dear. Are your dogs females? Ah. There's your naughty brother, isn't it? With one very, very cross Victoria. Oh, dear. That was a bitch. Yes, I thought it was. This behaviour in the park just confirms to me this is the testosterone problem. Duke especially smelt that bitch from miles away and ran and just would not leave her alone. She was coming into season and uh, he was very attracted by that. The solution is not just training, it's also neutering. But Victoria still needs to convince Angela and Dave. Neutering can prolong their life because it can make them healthier. It makes the risk of testicular cancer zero. And they don't have this testosterone going through them all the time. You know, this desire to go out and, and find a mate. I think it's the testosterone in me that's yes. stopped me, stopped me <laughs> yeah. having them done before yeah. now. I don't want to see me little dogs walking no. around without the bits. No, no, no. What, if they were your dogs, what would you do? Oh. If they were my dogs, I would have them neutered. Victoria leaves with Jimmy and Duke's plums hanging in the balance. It's just removing a body part, isn't it? It's, I mean, some people might not like them, but I think they're, they're lovely little plums. <laughs> but the dog's rude behaviour makes their minds up for them. Ah uh ah! -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. I think you're going not to gonna have to go. It's the day of reckoning for Jimmy and Duke. The operation takes half an hour and should cost between 80 and 150 pounds. Just up time flies now. I just want to get them back home. Looking forward to maybe seeing a difference in the behaviour. No more humping and testosterone fueled fights. You can hear them now, here they are. Oh, I love babies. The operation is a success. And both dogs are soon on the mend decided to get them get well card. Lie down, rest and heal. Hope you'll feel better soon. There you are, Duke. That's for you. Good boy. Oh, Jill wants envelope as well. One of the most common questions I get asked is about neutering. Should you neuter your dog, if, especially if it's showing sexual behavior? My advice is check with your vet first and never do anything without their advice. And if you don't like their advice, gain a second opinion and even a third opinion about whether you should neuter your dogs. But find out why the behavior is happening to begin with. With Jimmy and Duke, I thought that they were candidates for being neutered. I thought it would be much easier on them, actually, and their family if they were neutered, and I turned out to be right. Jimmy and Duke went on to live very, very long and very happy lives. Now the dogs are no longer at the mercy of their hormones, Victoria can complete the training. I know that one of your big problems has been getting the dogs to come back to you when they're off the lead. So today what we're going to do is we're going to practice your recall. <laughs> they begin with 50-foot training leads so they can gradually increase the dog's freedom to roam. Now is the moment of truth. There you go, let him off. Victoria has one last trick to get these dogs to return. Call them, go like that, and get down on the ground, and all of a sudden, instead of standing upright, you're lying down. That makes the dogs come over and investigate you, because they're naturally inquisitive. Yeah. Come on, fatty, come on. Finally, the dogs are listening to their owners, not their hormones. This is the next level. But Victoria wants to make sure they'll keep listening 
no matter what temptations are there to distract them. Putting it on the floor. Duke, sit. Up, up, up. Leave it. And within seconds, Duke is completely under Victoria's control. Leave it. But Angela's worried about Jimmy's willpower. He's got scratches on our table there where he's actually jumped up. Get food off the table. It's actually ruined the tabletop. And that is the second tabletop we've actually had. So this is going to be a real test. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Good boy. Oh. You good boy. It's a triumph for the dog who was so badly behaved, the family nearly returned him to a rescue shelter. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. You good boys. Good boys. Yeah. This is the final proof of leadership that control has been taken back by Angela and David from the dogs to them. They're now showing the dogs that they're the leaders. Before she leaves, Victoria wants to make sure the dogs have stopped humping for good. As far as I'm concerned, it's completely gone because I haven't seen them doing it since. Really? Since, yeah. Last time Josh visited, Duke couldn't resist him. Do you want to go up and stroke him, Josh, to see if he uh, behaves himself? Yeah, a good, good boy. boy. The neutering has put an end to the dog's sexual behaviour. Thanks to Victoria, the rebellious, oversexed labs are now model pets. Well, from Jimmy being the worst birthday present I could expect, I just kept thinking, God, and Anna wasted a present to get this nightmare, and now he's just turned into the best birthday present I ever could have hoped for. Jimmy was a problem dog who came from a rescue centre and there were times when I thought he's got to go. When I look at him now and look what he's achieved, I go, well, what do they really do? I think it's an absolutely perfect result. The dogs were the leaders in the house, absolutely, uh, but now we are the leaders. Thanks for watching this recap of Jimmy and Duke and here is an answer to a last question by Corner of the Barn who asks, do you ever have people that shadow you? Very occasionally I have had people come and watch what I do, but now I have my academy where I train people to be trainers and it's the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Have you used any of the techniques from It's Me or the Dog? Let me know in the comments below. And for more up-to-date information, why not head over to Positively TV for heaps of new content and up-to-date information on training and understanding your dog.